Hello, you're watching the news bulletin. Um, but now for another headlines as usual. Prime Minister Fang Mingqing and National Assembly Chairman Feng Dinghui received Chairman of Japan Bank for International Cooperation Maeda Tashaki. Taistan garment exports set to reach $43 billion this year. And later on, Vietnam moves up four places on Global Gender Gap Index. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính hosted a reception in Hanoi on July 22 for Chairman of Japan Bank for International Cooperation, Meida Tadashi. Prime Minister Ching held the effective and positive cooperation from the bank and its provision of loans for important infrastructure and large-scale projects in Vietnam. He also highlighted the strong growth of the Vietnam-Japan relations in all fields in the recent time. The Vietnamese government leader proposed that Japan and Japan Bank for International Cooperation support Vietnam in building a fast-growing and sustainable economy at larger scale with stronger self-reliance and better international integration. For his part, Maida highly valued the achievements that Vietnam has made during the recent tough time. He lauded commitments and actions by Vietnam regarding environment-related issues. The Japanese guests agreed with the Vietnamese leaders' proposals and shared a number of ideas and solutions for specific cooperation contents. He affirmed that the Japan Bank wants to cooperate and accompany with Vietnam in various aspects and areas. On the same day, National Assembly Chairman Vương Đình Huệ received Chairman of Japan Bank for International Cooperation, Meida Tadashi. Meida Takashi said his working visit to Vietnam aims to promote a strategic cooperation relationship between the two countries and at the same time build a national emissions community in Asia. His bank wishes to support and cooperate with Vietnam in specific projects, he added. Chairman Hui expressed the hope that the Japanese bank will support Vietnam to perfect its legislative and institutional systems to get a sustainable development. The top legislator also suggested the bank support Vietnam to build an energy transition roadmap and is said to credit support packages for energy projects with appropriate interest rates. We expressed his belief that Japan will continue to be an important and reliable partner of Vietnam in realizing the goals of climate change adaptation, energy transition and implementation of commitments the country has made at COP26. The central province of Guangbing shares a borderline of more than 222 kilometers with Laos, of which more than 199 kilometers is with Khambon province, with 52 national landmarks, and nearly 23 kilometers with Savanakhet province, with nine national landmarks. Over the years, Guangbing has worked to strengthen the special solidarity and comprehensive cooperation with the two Lao provinces. Implementing an agreement reached by the governments of Vietnam and Laos on regulations for managing the land border line and border gates, the border guard of Guangbing province has strengthened its cooperation with Khammon and Savanakhet provinces. We will continue to coordinate with La border forces to strengthen bilateral patrols, fight cross-border crime, participate in rescue efforts and pandemic prevention and ensure that the national border is always kept strong. Border guard forces from the two sides have also strengthened coordination to control entries and access a Chan Law International Border Gate, arranged checkpoints along trails and openings, and promptly detected, prevented, and handled smuggling and illegal border crossings, contributing to ensuring security and defense in border areas. We will continue to cooperate with Guangbing province on border management and protection, encouraging people from the two countries to contribute to protecting border sovereignty and national landmarks of the two sides. 
Over the past two years, in the face of COVID-19, the Border Guard Command of Guangbing Province has closely coordinated with Border Guards from Laos on controlling the entries and access at the Border Gate area to prevent any spread of the pandemic. There is also a foundation for multifaceted cooperation between the Vietnamese province and the Lao localities, strengthening and consolidating the traditional friendship and comprehensive cooperation between the two countries. Deputy Prime Minister Lee Van Tang has signed a decision approving the strategy for the development of mechanization of agricultural and agroforestry fishery processing until 2030. The strategy stimulates developing modern, efficient, and sustainable agricultural products processing, meeting the needs and regulations of the consumption market, and striving to turn Vietnam into an agricultural products processing center, including in the world's top 10 countries by 2030. The strategy also aims to set up a number of modern agricultural products processing corporations and enterprises with world-class economic prowess and management level. Agricultural products processing industrial clusters, coupled with the development of concentrated raw material production areas, will be merchandised and connected to the consumption of agricultural products according to the newly approved strategy. Vietnam's textile garment producers said to earn up to $21 billion from exports in the second half of this year, raising total shipments of the year to around $42 to $43 billion. The Vietnam Textile and Apparel Association said the industry has seen a gradual recovery this year after being adversely impacted by COVID-19 for two years. It enjoyed a trade surplus of $8.86 billion US dollars in the first half of the year. Exports of textile and government totaled some $22.3 billion US dollars from January to June, a 17.7% increase from the same time last year. Vietnam imported about $13 billion US dollars worth of trims and accessories in half one, up 9.8 percent year-on-year. The association anticipated the industry is facing bumpy road ahead with various obstacles in the remaining months of this year. The association has been working to connect domestic and foreign firms for the formation of supply chains, export markets, and enhance international cooperation in implementing projects in renewable energy, efficient water use, designing, branding, and labor management. The Honor Department of Industry and Trade held a cashless payment event with a view to helping drive e-commerce, technology application, and digital transformation. The event on July 21st attracted a large number of enterprises, trade centers, supermarkets, convenience stores, e-commerce platforms, and others in the capital service sector. The event is expected to encourage local residents to use colorless payment methods and motivate businesses to develop colorless payment and e-commerce while stimulating consumption, thus helping Hanoi remain one of the top two localities in the annual e-business index rankings. We will open more automated cashier counters and expand the number of cashless cashier counters. We will also coordinate with banks and payments units to introduce more promotional programs. As part of the event, information and cashless payments will be advertised through social networks, posters, live lists, and TV programs in July and August. Cashless payments are an inexorable trend in society. This year's theme, Touching the Future, highlight the desire of the government as well as individuals to have access to new, convenient and safe modes of payment. Hanoi is looking to raise cashless payments in e-commerce to 45% of the total, transaction with electronic bills on e-commerce platforms to 65%, and enterprises engaging in e-commerce via mobile apps to 35%. Vietnam has climbed four places on World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Index 2022 in the past year, from 87 to 83rd place out of 146 countries. 
The increase is thanks to my improvements recorded in closing the gender gaps across the four main components of the index, economic participation and opportunity, education and attainment, health and survivor, and political empowerment. In terms of closing the gap in economic participation and opportunity, Vietnam is ranked 31st behind countries like Sweden, the U.S., and regional neighbors like Thailand or the Philippines out of 146 countries assessed. Vietnam only ranks in 38th place in terms of educational attainment, with a report commenting that the literacy rate increased by 0 0.005, which in the absence of data for compulsory education enrollment, raised the sub-index score slightly. The country is nearly at the bottom of the ranking for health and survival sub-index at 141st place, just above Qatar, Pakistan, Azerbaijan, China, and India. The country is in 106th place in terms of political empowerment, with the most European countries populating the highest places. On political empowerment, Vietnam saw a 3.6 percentage points increase in the share of women in parliament, although men continue to have 100 percent of ministerial roles. The Vietnamese Consulate General and Trade Office in Hong Kong, China are running a Vietnamese space at the ongoing Hong Kong Book Fair 2022, which is open from July 20 to 26. This place features books, paintings, and items on Vietnamese culture, as well as English and Chinese versions of the Vietnam news agencies, Vietnam Pictorial. Over the years, our Vietnamese books have received attention from many local regions in general, who show an interest in the country's culture, history, and cuisines. Participation in the book fair is expected to have Vietnam promote its image and people, as well as the business and investment opportunities in the country. I have visited Vietnam with my family. Fortunately, I have also had the opportunity to read books on Vietnamese culture and tourism in Hong Kong. I find Vietnamese people are very hospitable and open. Vietnamese culture is diverse, and the country has many beautiful landscapes. I hope to have the opportunity to visit Vietnam soon. The buffet is special, and it's an educational, cultural, and commercial event. For the regions, it continues to be held despite the stressful pandemic times. Due to the COVID-19 quarantine methods in Hong Kong, China, foreign enterprises, including those from Vietnam, cannot physically join the more than 700 local organizations at the event. It is hoped that more Vietnamese companies and publishing houses will be able to take part next year. The first Hong Kong Book Fair was held in 1990. It has become a major annual event with the number of visitors reaching record levels each year, this 32nd edition year adopted the theme History and City Literature, with a tagline Reading the World Stories of Hong Kong. The second round of the Miss Peace Vietnam 2022 pageant was launched in Ho Chi Minh City on July 20th. The Beauty Pageant Taking place from May to October, six contestants who can serve as peace messengers and raise public awareness about children's rights, domestic violence prevention, the protection of vulnerable groups, and environmental protection. The winner of Miss Peace Vietnam 2022 will receive the crown and a prize worth nearly $22,000, while the first and second runners-up will go home with $12,800 and $8,500 respectively. There's no swimsuit competition in the contest, but rather sports activities and programs on protecting the marine environment. Mm -hmm.